you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question yourself before listening on. To begin answering this question, we want to look at the relationship between current charge carrier's drift speed and the cross-sectional area of the wire. And here is that relationship. I represents the current that's flowing through this transmission line stated in the question. N is the number of mobile charge carriers. And the question actually gives us that directly, this 8.5 times 10 to the 28th electrons per cubic meter. That is going to be our N value. Q would represent the charge on each of the electrons that are flowing through the transmission line. And we know that the charge of an electron is the value that is sometimes denoted as E. We might recall that that's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Technically, the charge on an electron is negative, but we're just going to use the magnitude of the charge in this equation. V sub D is the drift speed, and then A is going to be the cross-sectional area of the wire. We can assume that this wire is cylindrical, and therefore the cross-sectional area is going to be the shape of a circle. And of course, we know that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. If we wish, we can also write that in terms of the diameter because we know that the radius is simply half of the diameter. So we can actually call that d divided by 2. And then if we want to get really fancy, we can simplify that a little bit. We could square the d to make d squared, and then 2 squared becomes 4. So this will be the expression for the area. We'll hold on to that idea. What we want to do is actually solve this equation for the drift speed, vd. And so we're going to divide both sides by nqa. Now, the reason that we want to isolate this expression for the drift speed is because we also know that the time required for an electron to travel the full length of the cable would be the distance that it travels divided by the drift speed. Now, the distance that it's traveling, we can just call L to represent the length of this high voltage transmission line. And then again, we'll divide that by the drift speed. Remember, we have this expression for drift speed, so we're going to actually substitute that expression in for the denominator of our time equation. Algebraically, the term NQA can actually move up here to the numerator. And then let's also not forget that we had developed an equation for the area A of pi d squared over 4, so we're going to substitute that in as well. And then since we're dividing by 4, we can actually algebraically move the 4 to the denominator here. So we're now ready to plug in the values for the length, which was given to us in kilometers. So we're going to have to multiply that by 10 to the positive 3 in order to convert it into meters. N, as noted, was stated in the question. Q is the charge of the electron, which we also noted earlier. We've got pi. D is the diameter. That's given in centimeters, so just make sure you convert that into meters by multiplying it by 10 to the minus 2. And then the current, I, was given to us in the standard unit. So here we've plugged in all the known values. You might want to pause the video and just make sure everything looks like it's in its place and the units are correct. It turns out that when we cancel away all the units, what's going to be left is seconds. So whatever number we get here is going to come out in seconds. Let's go ahead and compute it. So we would get 8.55 times 10 to the 8th seconds. The question wants the time in years. So we can just do a series of quick conversions. For instance, we know that one minute is 60 seconds. We know that one hour is 60 minutes. One day is 24 hours. And then one year is roughly 365 days. So if we set things up in that manner, we can see that the days will cancel, hours will cancel, minutes cancel, and seconds also cancel. That's going to leave us with the answer in years. And when we work that all out, we should get roughly 27.1 years. So this would be the correct answer to the question. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that is shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to that question on YouTube.